Hello friends, welcome back. Today we are discussing the case of Lucy Letby. Lucy Letby is a nurse who's currently on trial in the UK for the alleged murder of seven babies and the attempted murder of 10 others. Oh. She has pleaded guilty to all 22 charges that she's facing. Things are slowly being uncovered as she's on trial. There is a ton that we don't know about the case. We are about three weeks into the trial. In the UK, it's a little bit different. They aren't releasing any details or they didn't prior. The murders happened between 2015 and 2016, I believe. Then there was this whole investigation and she's been incarcerated since 2020. The trial's just going on now. They're not releasing any of the details or they hadn't prior. So as the trial's ongoing, we're finding more and more gruesome details or just like really unbelievable details. And that's because the court wanted to protect the integrity of the case, which I think is really smart. We're in week three of the trial and it can last up to six months. Remember, UK court is different than United States court. Our trials might not last that long, but theirs do. Even just three weeks in, things are getting really interesting. So I wanna give you the background of the case and I'll tell you the details that we know so far, things that are being uncovered in court. And then once you get through this video, you guys tell me if you want me to cover like week by week and let you know the details of, they're going through each baby, giving the details of what happened with each one. And to me, the facts are gruesome, but they're also fascinating. So here's what we know so far. Lucy Letby was born in Hereford, England in 1990. So that makes her 32 years old when all this is going on. Her parents are Susan and David Letby, and she is their first and only child. Susan and David are a sweet and loving couple. They were super supportive of Lucy growing up. They have a really good relationship. In fact, to this day, they're still happily married. Lucy grew up in an extremely nice neighborhood. She lived in the home, the family home, for most of her life. One neighbor said that she knew Lucy since she was born. She watched her grow up and she grew into just a sweet, loving woman. And she cannot fathom that this is happening. She never in a million years would have guessed that she would be on trial for murder, especially murdering babies. Lucy's friends also said that she was super sweet. She was lovely. She was a bit socially awkward at times, but nothing that would make anyone think that she would be convicted of murder. Just like a little socially awkward, like all of us kind of are, especially after being locked inside for two two years. Most of them cannot believe this was happening. A lot of them don't know what to think. They don't know if she's being framed. She has zero criminal history, no charges against her, not even misdemeanors, and she's never been diagnosed with any type of mental health issues or disorders. She's easily described as the girl next door. I mean, look at her. She's a pretty blonde girl, a huge smile. She just looks so sweet and so innocent. Bubbly. To me, she has that look of somebody that is caring and empathetic. The type of person that not only she has the look for, but what people are saying about her, her friends and her neighbors and her parents, that she seems very nurturing and a perfect candidate of somebody to become a nurse. And that's exactly what happened. She went off to nursing school and in 2011, she graduated from Chester University with honors in pediatric nursing. Her parents Oh my God, they sound so adorable. Her parents were so proud of her that they took out an ad in the newspaper and they listed all of her accomplishments with a picture of her graduation, like a picture of her graduation picture with her graduation photo. Oh my God, like her parents, I want them to adopt me. Her parents sound precious super proud, wanted the world to know it. In the UK, I guess they do it just like the US where when they're in nursing school, the students have to work at the hospital to earn credits towards their degree, kind of like the practical hours, you know? I can't remember what it's called, somebody tell me. So in 2011, before graduation, she was working at the Countess of Chester Hospital in order to earn these credits so she could graduate with her nursing degree. The hospital loved her so much. They said she did such a good job. They offered her a full-time position in their neonatal unit. According to her friends and her family, this was her like, couldn't have written it better on a vision board, her dream job. And she got it because she was just such a good, caring and empathetic nurse. She was great with the babies. The parents loved her. It was like a no brainer, offer her the job. She took it and she was doing great. In fact, that neonatal unit started to outgrow itself. It was kind of dated and it was 
getting way too overcrowded. So in 2011, right after they hired her, the hospital started a baby grow campaign where they were trying to raise $3 million so they could build a bigger, more updated neonatal unit. Back to the girl next door look, in 2013, Lucy became the poster girl, the face for that baby grow campaign. She went on the record, in fact, in one of the ads to say, my role involves caring for a wide range of babies that require various levels of care. Some are here for a few days, some are here for a few months. I enjoy seeing them progress and caring for them and their families. Eventually, the hospital raised all the funds that they were looking for, and in 2020, this new unit was completed. Lucy went right in, she just transitioned right into that new unit. She was considered an outstanding nurse with the utmost compassion and empathy for the babies and also the parents of the babies that were in her care. Nobody would have ever thought that she'd be on trial for murdering those innocent little patients that were in her care. Every year, the hospital has to report numbers to, I don't know who, but they have to report them. So every year, the hospital puts out a report with all of their numbers. In 2013, there were only two infant deaths. In 2014, there were only three infant deaths. By 2015, those numbers dramatically increased. There were eight infant deaths that year. And in 2016, by June, so only halfway through the year, there were already six infant deaths. 10% over the UK's national average for infant loss. A side note, this hospital did have more underweight premature babies born than other hospitals in England, but it's still like the numbers still did not add up. Something wasn't right here. And what was weird about these infant deaths was that every single one of them was sudden. The deaths deaths themselves were unexplained. Like they didn't make any sense. And when trying to resuscitate these babies, they weren't responding to traditional means that would, I don't wanna say easily, because it's not easy to resuscitate a coding baby, but these practices that worked in the past and worked very well weren't working on these babies. So they knew something was wrong. The medical director at the hospital was named Ian Harvey. And Ian was like, something is up here. I need to get to the bottom of this. Number one, because I don't want it to happen in the future. We need to know what's going on. And number two, I feel responsible. Like I owe the grieving families an explanation for what happened to their babies on my watch. So in 2016, he reached out to the Royal College of Pediatrics and Child Health to review their routines and practices. And at the same time, they dropped down from a level two care to a level one care. So that means they wouldn't take babies that were born before 35 weeks, and they wouldn't take babies that needed a ventilator or needed to be in intensive care. The results of the review came back and they didn't really find much of anything. They were like, your practices are normal. They're on par with other hospitals here that have much lower infant death rates. Those hospitals were also able to resuscitate babies when they were coding. They did note that this hospital was located in an area that had a high usage of substance abuse and also a high rate of domestic violence. So they thought maybe that was correlated. They also noted that this hospital was very frequently short staffed. So they would have to go through staffing agencies to fully staff each unit very frequently. Frequently. But colleagues, hospital staff, nobody had any complaints and they didn't have any issues coming from the employees that were there through the staffing agency. They actually had really good things to say about them. The other thing that they put in the report was that there were communication issues where staff felt like they couldn't go to senior management to express their complaints and their concerns. I guess that's noteworthy. Like obviously they have to put it in the report, but to me it's like, what else is new? Like I feel like that's a very common issue among most employment areas, even if that was like the worst of the worst and they feared their management, that shouldn't really have anything to do with the infant mortality rate rising so dramatically in their hospital. If all of the procedures and practices were still happening on par and very well, especially in comparison to other hospitals that had the same amount of issues and were doing just fine. So this is still going on in 2017 and Ian really had to soul search and he really needed to decide if this is something he wanted to do and he decided he needed to go to the local police to investigate these infant deaths because the report wasn't showing anything, everything looked good, staff was good. They couldn't put their finger on what was going on. So he called the local police and he had them do an investigation or start an investigation on the infant deaths between 2015, June 2015 specifically, and June 2016. 
And he even went on record to say this was not a decision that he was making lightly. He just felt like he owed these families do everything he possibly could and exhaust every avenue so he could get them some answers. I mean, he's kind of on the chopping block at this point. And while that's all going on, the news blew this up. Word got out and major media outlets started printing stories about how this hospital had all of these infant deaths. So now there's even more pressure on Ian to get to the bottom of this because people are like, WTF? you're killing babies. The only thing the police found at that time or that they're releasing is that Lucy Leppy was on call, was working. What's not on call, what's the word? She was there, she was working when all of these baby deaths occurred. So after a year long investigation in 2018, they wound up suspending her from the hospital. She was held on the suspicious of murder for eight babies and attempted murder for another six. She hadn't been charged yet, but she was held in jail for three days before she got bailed out. During the time while she was incarcerated, police went and they searched the outside of her house. They searched her garden and they searched her garage. And they're saying at the time they didn't know why they searched her garden and her garage. In my opinion, and this is just my opinion, if they're searching her garden, I'm assuming they're searching for buried bodies. The following year, June, 2019, Lucy's arrested again for the murder of three more babies. But can I just stop here and ask why Lucy went back to work at the hospital? And then again, in 2020, she was arrested for the murder of eight infants and attempted murder of another 10. Again, you arrested her in 18, again in 19. Let her go back to work and now more babies are dying and you're arresting her in 20. I don't get it, but I guess they had no grounds to keep her out of work, I'm assuming. Make something up. The police were keeping everything under wraps as much as they could after that huge article came out or all of those articles came out. So now as of three weeks ago, we're in court and mind blowing facts are coming out about this case. And this was three years after the police launched their initial investigation into the hospital. She was accused of injecting air, insulin or extra milk into the bloodstreams of these babies. Somebody else testified, it's the mother that testified. She had delivered twins. They were in the neonatal unit because twins typically are born underweight and they need a little bit of extra care. So she walks in and she sees that one of her babies is in distress, notably in distress. There is blood coming out of the baby's nose and she was panicking. So Lucy's like, don't worry, that's kind of common. It's from the baby's breathing tube, like everything's fine. But the woman sees that something is wrong with her baby, like the blood, she's just totally panicked. And Lucy's like, don't worry, I'm a nurse. I got this, I got you. Calms the lady down, the lady leaves, the baby dies. And four hours after this baby passes away, Lucy is accused of allegedly making fraudulent nursing notes to cover her own tracks. Another colleague of hers who was a doctor testified at trial and he said he recalled going into the neonatal unit one time and he saw Lucy holding a premature baby she was on call, she was tending to their care, and he just got the most uneasy, awful feeling in his stomach because he had started piecing together that all of these babies that were suddenly either coding out or dying, they were related to her. They were in her care at the time of these instances. Why didn't he say anything? He said in this one instance, he noticed that this baby's oxygen levels had dropped to a very dangerously low level. And there is an alarm on the incubators of these babies. And when something like that happens, when something very, when something dangerous happens, that's gonna make them code, then there's an alarm that sounds immediately. Well, he noticed that in this instance, when the baby's oxygen levels drop that low, that's something that would sound off this alarm. Like it would be a code. It was silenced. He started to notice that this happened very frequently in these cases where he would see Lucy standing over an incubator of a baby that's having a dramatic episode. They need her to care for them. And she was just standing over it staring and the alarms had been silenced on all of these incubators. He's like getting freaked out. He's noticing that these weird dramatic episodes are happening to these babies while she's caring for them. He's noticing that the alarms are silenced. He's noticing that she's just kind of like staring and not doing anything, not taking care of the babies. Like that's something that if you hear that alarm or if you notice the oxygen levels, you're gonna like run and do your thing. 
and save the baby's life. But she's just standing there doing nothing, which is absolutely not normal. When police got the warrants and they searched her house, they found medical records for a set of twins that she was being accused of trying to kill. When she was confronted about it and asked if she was keeping those records as souvenirs, she absolutely denied it. She's like, absolutely not. I probably accidentally brought them home with me and it was not intentional. They also found a photo of a sympathy card she sent to a family after one of the babies in her care had died. They have it on record that she attempted four times to kill this baby before she was finally successful. What's not uncommon about that, and things were coming up later, they found on her computer that she would start to stalk the families of the babies she either tried to kill or kill. Some people are saying it was the ones that were attempted or like one twin survived and one twin didn't. And some people are speculating it's for her to see how those babies are progressing. Maybe it's guilt, maybe it's I don't wanna get caught, you know, one of those situations where she's paranoid. But yeah, weird. In fact, one time, after contacting a family three or four times while she was still working at the hospital, she was spoken to by her boss because the family complained to the hospital she was like being too much. And so she got reprimanded for that. So it's like a little strange, a lot strange. In opening arguments, well, in the United States, we would call the prosecutor, but in England, they call it the King's Council Barrister. I'm not saying that right, but when I heard, the, like I'm doing research on this and I'm listening to these beautiful British accents and they were saying, the King's Council barrister, I'm like, what's a barrister? And I'm like, Starbucks, barista, what? Side note, just a fun fact, it used to be the Queen's Council barrister, but now it's the King since Queen Elizabeth passed. Interesting, right? So anyway, this King's Council barrister, there will also be a junior council barrister assisting the King's Council Barrister, AKA what we would call the prosecutor, get it? Am I being annoying? I don't know, but these facts just fascinated me. He said she tried to kill this baby four times before she was actually successful. Mm. And the worst piece of evidence the police found when they were searching her house, and I think it's like the nail in the coffin to convict her, were sticky notes. And on these sticky notes, she wrote, I'm evil. I killed them on purpose because I'm not good enough. I don't deserve to live. I will never get married or have children. I feel very alone and scared. And then it also contained words like hate, panic, fear, lost, just kind of like scribbled on these steamed sticky notes. Prosecution is like, this is a confession. We have it right here. She wrote it with her own hand, fingers and hand. <laughs> But then her attorneys are like, that's not what this is at all. This is not a confession. It was her venting out the feelings. When this was happening, she was getting charged and it's the only way that she knew how to deal with the emotions. Just like it was her outlet. Good try, I think, but my opinion. It was also mentioned, and I guess I'll throw it in here. She had no social media. She doesn't have any live Facebook or Instagram or any accounts we have access to. So she just never did, whether it was because she was private, she was guilty, she just didn't have time for it. I I don't know, but that was noted in a couple of places. There's also this text conversation between her and a colleague. I believe it was after the first baby's murder. It was like, yeah, and obviously paraphrasing, but in some of these instances, like some babies survive, some don't, it's just fate. Cold and just weird. And obviously she was trying to clear herself, but just a strange thing to say. And also what I thought was very interesting is that not one person, no one has come forward and said like, yeah, there was something funny about her. She was just a little bit off. Everybody you speak to is like, she was lovely. She was so sweet. She was really good at her job. All of her colleagues liked her. I mean, minus those couple of colleagues that testified in court already, but everybody else was like, there's no way. Like, I don't understand it. Some people are saying that she's being framed and she's falling on the so on the sword for the hospital. So they don't have to take account for it. Her parents have been in court every single day and they've been seen on multiple occasions mouthing to her, I love you. Like these parents are just the sweetest little things. She was in jail from 2020 on the whole entire two years waiting for trial. They were saying it was for the safety of the public, but also for her own safety. I don't know if she was considered a flight risk. I don't even know if that's a thing in the UK, but it was noted that it was for her safety and for the safety of the public. Another interesting fact is that these babies' names are not being used in court because by UK law, I believe in US law too, we can't state the names of minors. So what they're being referred to is baby A, baby B, baby C, and so on through the alphabet. And each week in court, they're addressing each baby's case. So like week one, it was baby A and B. Week two, I'm just making this up, but 
baby C and D and so forth. So there are very intriguing and interesting facts that are coming up about each of these babies that I didn't get into. But if you guys want, I can do an update on these. I'm going to follow this case whether I report on it or not, because just as a mom, it's just as a person it's really intriguing to me. What happened? What flipped in this woman's head? So let me know if you guys are also intrigued. And if you want me to let me know in the comments, that's why I'm doing this. Let me know if you guys want me to keep going about the jury. There are 12 members of the jury. Each of them has been given an iPad. Number one, so they could see the evidence. Number two, so they could take notes because this is a six month trial. And I love that because I love how intricate they're getting with the details. Just so you guys know, I found this intriguing too. Their employers, the employers of the jurors do have to give them the time off from work, but they do not have to pay them for the time off from work. And I'm curious, I'm going to look it up and let me know in the comments if you do or no. I'm curious if the court, like if the government will pay these people for being there for six months, if their employers won't, you know, because that's a long time to not get pay. My opinion on this so far, I probably shouldn't say too much based off of what I've talked about in this video and the facts that we know so far. I have this weird, okay, let me let me think about how to say this. A baby killer should, should be prosecuted. But I also have this teeny tiny, I mean, I don't, I'm having trouble formulating these thoughts into words because I don't want this to be misconstrued. But on that sticky note where she's like, I'll never have a baby, I'll never get married. And they're talking about how she was overworked. The hospital floors were understaffed. She would pick up all of these extra shifts and work overtime constantly. In my opinion, was it a depressing situation? Was she overtired? Nurses work with ridiculously long hours, especially NICU nurses. You're working, I guess any nurse, but like you're working around the clock. So did she just get to the point where she got overtired and started to go into one of those weird overtired psychoses? Sleep deprivation is a serious thing and it does serious stuff to your brain. I follow this influencer who got a scan of her brain while she was extremely sleep deprived. The doctor that scanned her brain was like, no shame, no guilt. Were you a heavy drug user, illicit drug user in your past? She was like, no. And he's like, were you a heavy drinker, a heavy smoker? Like there's no shame. Like 20, 30 years ago, you did what you did. And she was like, absolutely not, never. No, I honestly, I would tell you because 20, 30 years ago, but I never once used legal drugs in my life. Maybe I smoked weed once, but like never ever used drugs in my life. And he was like, your brain scan has so many holes in your brain. As they started talking through and they talked about how many hours she was sleeping a night, you have the holes in your brain and it looks like an illicit drug user. So maybe that's what happened. I don't know, but let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.